Hey, this is Jeff Pilson of Foreigner, Dockin, Dio, MSG, M Machine, you name it, I've been in it. Anyways, you are watching for bassplayersonly.com. Hi everyone, you're watching for bassplayersonly.com, where the old rockers learn to groove. I'm John Liebman, founder and first baseman. We have a great interview this week. Jeff Pilson from Foreigner and from George Lynch and Dokken and MSG. Last time we talked about all that stuff, as well as his acting career. We talked about <laughs> Mike Varney, Shrapnel Records, and a bunch of other stuff. Hello, Jeff. Hello, John. Good to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you, too. That interview, if you recall, was on the Foreigner tour bus parked behind Pine Knob, which, you know, they call it Pine Knob again. Oh, it's they a, do. We could well, actually I've always called it Pine Knob, so <laughs> there you go. Good the to D know it's Pine Knob again. D yeah, D and D yes, D I do D remember D that interview very well. Yes, what I remember was I started out, I don't know why these words came out of my mouth. I don't talk this way, but I said, now, Jeff, you have been ensconced in the rock base milieu. And you, you said, well, two big words in one sentence. What? I said, I don't know why I said that. I don't talk like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's... You know, fill in some of the gaps, bring us up to date. That was, uh, well, four and a half years ago. Wow. So what's keeping you busy these days? What's keeping me busy? Well, um, so right now, um, so George Lynch and I have another heavy hitters record that's coming out. It's coming out, I believe, early in the new year. We have a single out right now that's a Christmas song called It's, it's a Wonderful Life. And it's it's just a nice, positive little Christmas song that we were, you know, that we just wrote. And the record company had requested us to do a Christmas song. And we decided we'd write one instead of cover it. So we did. So that's out right now. Heavy Hitters record is coming out. George and I just finished writing the music for the next end machine record which will be coming out sometime towards the end of next year um very excited about that way to hear that that's coming out amazing um i've got the revolution saints there's a new record coming out uh we have we just put a single out uh Re revolution saints is myself uh joel hoekstra from white snake uh and dean castronova from journey so the three of us have this band. It was, they, they've already done a couple records and Jack Blades and um, Doug Aldrich were in the band before Joel and I. Um, so Joel and I have just joined, but that new record's out. The single is called Eagle's Flight. That's out. The record comes out sometime early in 2023. And very excited about that. That's a whole other thing. And then we get the Foreigner Farewell Tour that starts next year. So lots, lots to do. That's it, huh? Nothing else? No. <laughs> uh, boy, you know, how many bands, I don't know, forgive me if I'm getting into touchy territory here. How many bands have had a farewell tour, which they may have, may not meant? Is this really the farewell well, tour? <laughs> well, yes, we mean it. Um, you know, Kelly, our lead singer, uh, has, he's basically... Um, he and Mick basically decided that the band is firing on all cylinders right now. Everything's going great. We're at the top of our game. We don't want Foreigner to stop once it starts going downhill. We want to stop while we're at the top of our game. So um, I would say, I, I mean, it's going to last more than just 2023. I'm sure it'll go into 24. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be one of those forever farewell tours. We do want to stop <laughs> been doing this a long time um uh but you know there there is a bittersweetness about it because uh it's been such a great gig and the band is feeling great we're at our best right now so it, it is kind of an odd time to stop but again we want to stop while we're at the top of our game and and while we're young enough to have lives afterwards so <laughs> so yeah it, it's gonna be uh It'll be more than a year, but I, I don't think it's going to be one. I don't think it's going to be Kiss, who I think, didn't they start their farewell tour in like 96 or something? <laughs> so it's, it's not going to be one of those or Ozzy or one of those. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll be, I guess, through the U.S. and what, where Europe and. No, we're going to do 
the the plan and I don't know 100% whether we can do this yet, but we want to play every place we've played. So we want to go back to everywhere we've been. So that'll be, it's going to be a worldwide thing. I mean, I hope we can work in every little country nook and cranny, but um, but that's the plan. Let's hit everywhere. Well, I understand the nostalgia and all that, but wouldn't you want to play some places that you've never played? Maybe well, that as well. Play. Sure. But, but, uh, but, Along with that, we do want to play every place we've played just to tie it up. So you might add like Antarctica or something like that. If to we, the- yeah, I mean, listen, our fan in Antarctica would be very excited. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You mentioned a whole bunch of records and a whole bunch of recordings. But last time you also were talking about uh, wearing a different hat, like a producer and uh doing some stuff like that. Uh, Anything like that in the works? Well, with the end machine, I also produce it Uh, with black Swan, which, which features red beach, Robin McCauley and Matt star with black Swan. I'm, I also produce as well as play base. Um, There's also on the docket. I, I, I want to try and finish an EP with Steven Adler. Um, He's got some, great songs he's got this amazing singer um so we want to try and get an ep done sometime over the next few months so he's got that going so i'd be producing that um and then uh other than that uh there's you know we'll see what comes down the pike with some foreigner stuff so there you go there you go uh let's talk a little bit about gear Last yeah. time we were talking all about uh, Fender and Ampeg and was it Dean Markley? I'm trying to remember. I, I was a Dean Markley guy. I'm actually using Apex strings now, uh, which was started by the guy that invented blue steels at Dean Markley, a guy named Jeff Landtroop. Uh, But I've been using Apex strings and I'm so happy with them. They sound great. They last um, and they're really consistent. So I've been very, very happy about my Apex strings. Uh, typically, I, I don't remember seeing you playing more than four strings on a bass. Do you play five string or anything? I play more? five string quite a bit in the studio. I don't play it live very often, uh, in, unless docking tours or and machine or one of those. Um, but yeah, I do play uh, five string, like I say, quite a bit in the studio. And I also have this beautiful 10 string that I should show you. This bass is really cool. You see that? Okay, that's what I would have guessed. It's like a five string, but doubled. Yes, like a twelve string guitar or like right, a- right, right. It's a ten string, and it's it's just a gorgeous bass. It just okay. sounds lovely. Like a that was made for me by Keith Horn at Marvin Guitars, and it's just a fabulous instrument. I don't think we talked about this last time, but uh, I wanted to ask you for some bass player advice you know for bassplayersonly.com is a bass instruction site we have more and more people coming every day from all over the world to learn how to play bass and Mm -hmm. as i sort of hinted at the beginning (laughs) most of the people i'm attracting here are men in their 50s 60s 70s sometimes older they're not they're not really career bound and they just want to get together with their friends play some classic rock or maybe some Muffles, maybe some walking bass, monk R&B, whatever they like. And the other thing that that uh, typically comes with becoming 50s, 60s, 70s age range is uh, are things like arthritis and tendonitis <laughs> yeah. and pain in the shoulders, neck, back. And, you know, I've had a lot of people with uh, surgery. and uh, But I try to impress upon them that you, you don't have to be Billy Sheehan or Victor Wooten or Stu Hamm, you can make the most incredible, profound impact on the music just by playing a super simple bass line that doesn't put a lot of wear and tear on the old muscles and bones. So I'm just setting it up, just trying to give you some context. So with that in mind, what advice do you have that you can impart to somebody like that who wants to learn? All right. A couple of things. Um, first of all, um, as far as health goes, I'm having surgery on Friday. Um, I've got some knee issues going on right now. And something that I have discovered that I want to pass on to other people that has just been so helpful to me, um, because you're talking about the arthritis and all that kind of stuff. I have all I have all that stuff. Um, for years, I was using ibuprofen and Aleve daily. And that's really bad. 
really, really, really bad. Uh, fortunately, my blood uh, blood work isn't bad yet, so I didn't do a whole lot of damage, thank God. But I found something to take that place. And for all of us, like you say, in that age group, um, this is a real helpful thing. It's something called Umeri, U-M-A-R-Y. It's made in Mexico. Uh, it's a basically a uh, hyper powered anti-inflammatory. It's not, uh, it's not okay by the FDA here yet. Um, but I've been taking it every day since October 12th and have not needed ibuprofen or leave. It's been amazing. It's a miracle drug. So if that's something, if there, if you're experiencing those kind of problems, I highly encourage you to try this Umeri stuff. It is so helpful. And if there's problems, you know, with your, uh, coordination or anything due to, you know, flexibility issues or whatever, this helps so much. So that's number one. Number two is you're right. I mean, to have fun playing bass, I mean, I'm not Stu Ham and I have fun playing bass, you know, <laughs> you don't have to be, you know, uh, this, um, you know, chops guy to, to enjoy it. You can love it just for the groove, which, and, and that's me. I love to just groove. So my suggestion is, Pick up the rec your favorite records, your favorite stuff. Is it Motown? Is it R and B? Is it blues? Whatever it is, and just play along. And even if you don't have every note exactly right, find the feel because there's always a pulse to music. And bass and the pulse of the music are intrinsically linked. So find the pulse. So if you're playing along, if it's a blues song. Boom, get that pulse just play along with it. even if you don't have all the notes right just feel that pulse because feeling it is so much more important than anything else then work on the notes then you know you know if you hear do 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 okay do, 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 you know find where it is um but just mostly feel that pulse work on that simplicity if it is just simple stuff you want to play just play along with it and like I say, get into the zone, get, you know, feel hypnotically charged by the music. And if you can feel that, the notes will come. But if you've got the feel, you're halfway there. Wow, that was great. Uh, you reminded me of something else when you, you were talking about, uh, you know, all the, the uh, bodily ailments that uh, Queen yeah. was on us. You you said you were into yoga, I think, last time. Are you still yes, doing it? I am. And in fact, I do a meditation class once a week on Mondays. And in fact, if you want to go to yoga at hotforyogascv.com, yoga at hotforyogascv.com, um, you can get my virtual meditation class that I hold every Monday uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And I've been doing that since the pandemic. And uh, it's been really helpful. I've really enjoyed teaching the class. And it's fun to have these people in on it. So yeah, if you're into it, this is a meditation class. There is some stretching involved. I do some postures, mostly dealing with meditation. But I find yoga to be such a helpful and important part of my daily ritual. And it's like I say, without it, I don't know where I'd be. I try to do it. I try to get into it. And my there wife, you go. Tell all you can do is try to do it. I have become an expert at Shavasana. Oh, there you go. <laughs> which, of course, is corpse pose, <laughs> which means you're lying there. Well, that you know what? That's a good start. <laughs> One actually, down, 900 some to go. <laughs> actually, though, I, I enjoy it. Well, you, you've got to you've got to earn it. Because if you're just, otherwise you're just lying on the on the ground or on the mat on the floor, right. but you really do the stretches and and another thing at the I really don't want to offend yoga people, but I just want to learn how to stretch and do the poses. I don't really want to think about my heart center and grounded and open yeah, yeah, yeah. And grace and all that. Sure. And I, I hope sure. this is not coming out wrong, sure. but. But uh, there was an episode with, with uh, Larry David on Curb Your Enthusiasm, where he he refused to say namaste at the end because he just and then he was like ostracized from the whole thing. But is is there anything bad about that? If you, you know, because because my wife says, well, then you you don't really appreciate what the yoga is about if you discard all that. Well, okay, well here here's the thing, yoga 
was created as a meditation instrument. That was how it was created. The exercises all came along as a side benefit to to train the body and the breath for meditation. But that doesn't mean there aren't great benefits from doing that. And, you know, nobody's requiring you to meditate. (laughs) You know, that's up to you. So if you want to just do the stretches, they're incredibly healthy. Why not do them as much as you feel you can do them to the best of your ability? And remember that that's one of the beautiful things about yoga stretching is that there is no uh, too hard. You know, there is no too old to start. There is no too inflexible to start. It will work on anybody at any level. You just have to take it slow. So if all you're interested in is the stretching, do it. Do it moderately, but try and be regular and perseverant about it because that's that's the real key. And that's one of the reasons why if you're involved in the whole approach, it tends to bring you into the program more. But if you all you want to do is do the stretching, just do it, but do it regularly. Am I shortchanging myself by, uh, you know, is that an unhealthy attitude by, uh, no. by just wanting this and not that? No, if it's honest, how could it be wrong? You know, <laughs> I think, you know, I said, I don't want to offend anybody. I think my choice of words itself might have been offensive when I said yoga people. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Consider myself a yoga people. <laughs> All right. I, I don't, uh, it, it, sometimes we get off on these tangents because there's some interesting, I, I was interviewing Billy Sheehan one time and he started talking about Jackie Gleason. And it's like, you never know where it's going to go. Or, yeah. uh, you know, like a, uh, was interview. I don't even remember. It's happened more than once. A hardcore heavy metal rock person started talking about like, uh, Abba. I, <laughs> no, no. I mean, well, yeah, that too. But actually, I brought up Abba in a different context. I was interviewing Christian McBride, and I think we went to Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club in London, a you know, world-renowned yeah. place. And and I had my wife sit through like you know two and a half hour, two and a half hours of Ravi Coltrane, which is not really her thing. She got back at me a couple nights later. We we went to uh, one of the shows in London, and I, uh, Mamma Mia. So I sat through like, two and a half hours of. ABBA music. Okay, <laughs> and I was going to say this, this, people would bring up like, you know, I don't know, Ornette Coleman or, or Dizzy sure. Gillespie or names that you wouldn't, Charlie Hayden, names that you yeah. wouldn't expect to hear from people in that milieu, ensconced in that milieu. <laughs> yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the future, but you're already talking about 2023, 2024. Uh, maybe I'll try it this way. Is there anything else that you've always wanted to do that you haven't gotten around to or haven't been able to do yet because you have done an awful lot. I still haven't written the greatest song of all time, so I'm working on it, okay? <laughs> That's I'm going to be patient with myself. <laughs> we talked about that in the last interview, too. We still trying. trying? I'm still trying, still working on it. Uh, I mentioned Paul McCartney, and I said I, I saw him once on, on Larry King, and, and Larry says, what's your motivation? It can't be financial. He says, no. He says, so why do you do it? He says, just, you want to write that great song, you know, that really great song. And your comment was, you know, he's come pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did okay. <laughs> yeah, he did. But that's when I said, uh, you know, does Meryl Streep need to be in another movie? Does John Cr- Grisham need to write another book? They do it because that's what they do. So that's yeah. What you- no, I, I, I mean, listen, I st- seriously, I do want to make, I do want to improve my writing and become a better writer. And and there's more collaborating I want to do. There's people I, you know, I, I am anxious to work with. And so I, you know, the door is wide open, especially once Foreigner does stop touring. You know, I'll, I plan on doing a lot of recording. So hopefully I'll get to do a lot of things that I haven't done yet. You've got some beautiful, beautiful instruments there. But I bet when you go to play the bass, you probably tend to gravitate to the same one or two or three most of the time. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, for, certainly. I mean, because most of the stuff I do is rock. So for rock, if it's gnarly rock, that 58 P bass, if you want a four string, that's, I mean, it's the gnarliest, best bass I've ever had. If I want it a little mellower or a little different, I'll use the 63. And then I got the Fender 5 that that is great for five string. The 10 string I use a fair amount. I, they're usually most records I do, there's at least one or two songs that have that on it. Um, and um, 
and then I do use the other 58 a lot because that just sounds so good. So, so yeah, I mean, I do kind of use a stable, um, but then when I do other things, it's fun to, to, you know, like try the T-Bird or I do play the Hofner sometimes on things. It's, I love that. What would you be if you weren't a bass player? Something outside of music. Outside of music, a yoga teacher. <laughs> I do remember asking you that. Sometimes if it's been a long time, you know, sometimes it's like 20, not 20 years, I mean, 10 years since I've interviewed somebody last, I'll ask them and see if their answer is consistent. And I think that is what you said. I think it is. <laughs> well, this is great, Jeff. I always love catching up with you. And yeah. uh, let me know if you come through Michigan. Yeah, well, I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Farewell um, tour. How could how could foreigner not play Michigan? <laughs> absolutely. Well, keep doing what you're doing, and uh, and um, keep that, that energy going, and keep yeah. doing the yoga. And uh, you you inspire me, kind of to <laughs> to do some yoga. <laughs> hey, we'll take anything we can get. John, um, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. I love your site. Uh, I read it all the time. Great interviews, and it's great to have a base community. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your kind words. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com, where the old rockers learn to groove. I'm John Liebman, founder and first baseman. Thanks so much to our special guest this week, Jeff Pilson. I will see you all next week. In the meantime, let's play bass.